enforcement and everybody here already know what time it is with the, 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 the uh, black community and the diaspora community that's coming over here and when our intentions it's nothing but drama and, and uh, uh taking place and it's putting being put out there and, and, and uh and people are getting turned on. There are a few countries that many people in the black diaspora are interested in their return to Africa. There obviously is Kenya, there's South Africa, and of course there is Ghana, and even Tanzania. But there's one country that has a lot of promise and a lot of potential. The Gambia? Yeah, the Gambia. Let's stop the show. Let's look at the Gambia. Where is it even at? It's in West Africa, but it's surrounded and engulfed by another larger country, Senegal. That's gonna be important later. So let's talk about the Gambia and people repatriating there. Rewind! So in 2020 is when I first started hearing about people coming to the Gambia, just like I started hearing about people coming to Tanzania. But there was one person in particular that I noticed a lady by the name of Juliet Ryan. And I came across her information when I saw Wardy Maya go to the Gambia around that same time. And she was doing a lot of activism in the Gambia regarding automatic citizenship for the diaspora. It's for our religious leaders, not government. Weighing in on the ongoing debate on automatic citizenship for descendants of those enslaved in the new world, the outspoken politician says all African diaspora returnees who are resident in the Gambia should be accorded citizenship status. Juliet Ryan also supports automatic citizenship for African diaspora returnees. For us diasporans to really be Gambian, to really be African. So our ancestors were taken in slavery. So I have Gambian DNA. My DNA says I'm Gambian. I might speak with a British accent, but I'm Gambian. And that wasn't the only time she talked about it. She talked about it in great terms in this way. Nigeria. I've never been to Liberia, but I'm obviously living in Africa. Um, I repatriated and I live in the Gambia. And I moved from the UK and I've not been back since. Yeah, I found myself in Africa. I am an investor in Africa. Um, I am a, a promoter of Africa. And uh, firstly, I want to unpack automatic citizenship just to make it clear to you. When I first um, put out the package about automatic citizenship, automatic citizenship was based on a similar basis as um, as already exists. Firstly, let me just state this. When our ancestors were taken in chains, they did not have any immigration or any passport. They even lost their names, their identity. They were stripped of their culture, stripped of their family, stripped of their legacy. Now what she's saying makes perfect sense, especially to those of us from the diaspora. But let's go back and look at the map of the Gambia, or better yet, let's look at Senegal in Gambia inside of it. For those people who are in the Gambia, it is a very small country with very limited resources and very limited land, all right? Now, couple that with it being a place with not a lot of opportunities and a lot of poverty, well, you're gonna get a lot of bad situations that are possible to happen. Now, don't get me wrong, poverty is everywhere, but when you have limited resources, poverty is elevated up that way. Now. Let's get to another issue that happened. Now we have this small land. We have these people who are not so rich. We have people who don't have a lot of opportunity. Let's couple that with the fact that the land is cheap and you do have the ability, according to this, to buy land in Nagamia. Can foreigners buy our own lands outright in the Gambia, like own it for life? The answer is yes. You can buy an own land in the Gambia outright. There are no restrictions. Unlike some places in the world, when you buy a house, you cannot own the land. You can just own the house. Or you can only buy a lease land and you have to give it back to the owners or the government with 99 years, some 25 years. In the Gambia, you can buy a lease, free old or customary owned land. I will do a separate video breaking down that soon. So make sure you subscribe. The only restriction that you may have is that you cannot buy a large size land 
to live on as residential use only so as a non-gambian you can only buy up to 50 by 50 or 60 by 40 so that's like half a acres of land for residential use only for agricultural land you can have a bigger size here yeah. that is the law according to the government of the gambia so comment below and let me know what other questions or topics you would like to hear me cover see so now you have this influx of you know african americans and black caribbeans coming to the gambia because they can buy a lot of land for cheap and they can own it freehold own it and the land is already very small so you have these poor people there that can't buy the land but these Americans and black British that can buy the land. And so now these people are occupying the land and starting businesses where these people that own the land can't own anything or don't have anything. I know it's tough that they don't have it, but that's not how the Gambians see it. Now then, after that problem, there becomes another issue. The issue between disrespectful people from the diaspora, according to the Gambians and the Gambians themselves. And this was brought to light by a YouTuber who formerly lived there by the name of Art Kathy. Now, of course, I know these things can go on in Africa, but she plain out came out and said it like this. Gambians, Gambians, fellow Gambians, Gambians, I'm here and you're not gonna like this message because I'm gonna tell you the truth. One of the problems that you have is that y'all don't like to tell the truth. Africans don't like to tell the truth, just like black folks back at home in the West, they didn't like to tell the truth. I've noticed this so many times since being here, and I know a lot of diasporans, oh, they're gonna need to see and hear this. Y'all gonna appreciate me telling y'all the real deal about coming out to the Gambia and coming to any of these countries. I know I can speak for myself, but this is a problem that you guys have here. Y'all live hand to mouth, but y'all have a scam, con, artist culture. Can't nobody even do business with y'all. Y'all don't know how to do right. Y'all don't know how to do right until somebody's just your master and giving you little scraps. Is that what you want us to do? Because the way you treat people, the way you act toward each other, you can't even trust each other. See, this is what's behind all those smiles, the smiling coast. And then it came out and said it like this. You, you try to support them, do right, pay them, so all that type of stuff. And this is some, not all, but goddamn it, it's the majority of you guys. This is what people are going to see when they come out here, and this is why y'all don't have nothing. Um, yeah, you, you try to patronize and support, and you get greedy, and it's no integrity. So this is how it comes across to us. What you have to realize is that black Americans from the diaspora, we have been with the most masterful, deceitful con artists ever. And what you bring into us with this little penny ante hand to mouth hustle game, it's not going to work because that's going to get you in trouble. And y'all telling me to be careful? No, see, what you need to do is be careful. Y'all got a good one in me. I went on here, gave an extra little money just to make the problem go away. I don't want no problems. And the, the person was like, oh, you don't trust me? No, see, I trusted you already. But see, now you with the BS. You're going to have that a lot. I'm sure a lot of people that's been out here building, they have seen this with some of our fellow Gambians. And unfortunately, it's a lot of you that act this way. Now, we have some people on our team that we work with that are great, but when you try to do business with some of these people out here, it's a constant thing you will deal with in the Gambia, is the lack of competency. The and a lot of people agreed with her. There were multiple people getting robbed in the Gambia. I'm not saying all. And then there were ladies that were getting scammed. And even these ladies here talked about scams that they received in Gambia. People come to the Gambia. Do you think, because um, I was talking to a, a man today and he was saying that it's almost like people drop all their guards as soon as they come to the Gambia. And he was from the US and he was saying that in the US, they know all about cybersecurity and they make sure that everything is secure. But he said, it feels like as soon as people come to the Gambia, they just forget everything they've learned about cybersecurity. What do you think? I think it's true because you, you've come to Mama Africa and you feel that, okay, I've, I'm dropping my guard because things are safe, but nowhere is cybersecurity safe. So we do need to take into consideration the safety and to keep your personal details very safe. Okay. Right, so um, at the moment, What's happening is WhatsApp is being targeted. This particular gentleman got in touch with us, stating that somebody had sent him a message on WhatsApp. 
Now this message obviously he opens and it says, um, well, there's a code here. We'd like you to read it back or type it and text it to us. Once you do this, they can actually take over your WhatsApp and all your contents, your, wow. your, your, your um, whole group. So what happened to him is he actually had this particular person go into his WhatsApp group and get in touch with all his contacts, asking for $600 from every um, contact that he had. Wow. Right. And obviously, if we're friends and someone's going to say, well, Janet has asked for 600 and you know I'm a genuine person, you'd obviously give it over. Because he's your friend. That's right. So this is how they're scamming people. And this young man had to sort of find out the hard way. Someone got in touch with him and said, well, at the end of the day, you know, you're asking for this money. What is it for? And it wasn't until then that he actually realized that he'd been hacked. This isn't to say that all of their experience is bad. Obviously, there are good experiences in any place. But I want to get to the crux of the real issue that I see happening with the black diaspora, whether it's African-American or black Caribbean or black British. It's twofold. You have people who own the land now who had access to the land, but who are not Gambians. And they're pretty much getting some way their way in the country, according to the locals, right? Then also you have some people from the diaspora feeling like Gambians are not doing business the right way. They're being used. And then the Gambians feel like you're being rude and disrespecting us in our own country. How could you say that? Which is one of the reasons that Art Cathy allegedly got ran out of the Gambia. But then I came across this particular clip. Let's play it. This is going to break down some things and we'll come back. There is a growing underbelly that is specifically coming together in Gambia to wage war on the black Americans that are coming there. The black Americans are being seen as foreigners that are looking to usurp and take land that doesn't belong to them, that are looking to get land for free or on the cheap, land that has been denied to local Gambians who don't have the money. and people People are really underestimating the resentment and the anger that locals feel when they see you coming from abroad buying up land that belonged to their grandma, buying up land that belonged to their auntie, buying up land that belonged to their great great grandfather. Here's the bottom line. They don't think you deserve it. Yes, that's the truth. They don't think you deserve it. And therefore, they are making sure that they do everything possible to make you feel unwelcome and unsafe. And I would say right now, they are 1-0. and oh. If this were a football game, they'd be many yards touchdowning as opposed to black Americans because black Americans have refused to be honest about this criminal element. And it is making couples like The Arrival and others very vulnerable. Now let's talk a little bit more about why it would benefit the criminal element to target black Americans. Number one, it's an easy target. In any country, whenever you want to look at a target, you always look at the foreigner. You always look at the person who's not like you. And as much as black Americans want to believe that skin color is the end all be all, I have to tell you that is not the case at all. There are many tribes in Gambia alone. And off the top of my head, we can- now, Of course, this particular video has been viewed a lot of times. Tariq Nasheed even commented on this. So what the lady is saying is that the Gambians are gonna start targeting black Americans because of the land issues and also because they're easy to target. Now, let me get back to the land issues. There is some level of even land scamming from the diaspora in the Gambia. Situations like this also prove it. The issue that we're having is 
the Akala transfer is not a legal document. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Even if she gave me back a refund for my land processing, I've, 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 there's um, nearly £4,000 that I gave to Juliet for land that I, at the moment, don't legally own. Up to now, a year and a bit later. I've just got me to mention that it's, it's um, yeah, a big part of it is the money, but at the same time, um, it's had a big impact on our mental well-being, um, our everything, because it's, it's caused a lot of stress, worry, anxiety, um, knowing that we've worked so hard to send and trust in someone, send our money over to have a future plan in a place where we want to go to in the near future to call home. Um, and if anyone that lives in the UK or America knows how this system is is so um, is draining, is mentally draining for everyone, where they take our money left, right, and centre from the tax man. So when you do have an opportunity to kind of go back to Africa and build something, you know, it can give us the motivation to continue. Well, let's get back to the Gambia and all of that. The reality is, is that there have been several ladies posting videos talking about they've been robbed there is elements of older ladies dating younger men in the gambia and it's not just white women it happens with the black women so i've seen elements of that and people saying it's being disrespectful i've also talked to people that live there and what they do say and this is not me saying this that certain sisters come over to the gambia and they still think that it's america and the way that they deal with the people there and deal with some of the men there um, it could be looked at as disrespectful when it's just being themselves. And so all of this is coming to a head, allegedly, and the Gambian people are just tired of it. That's why you saw in the opening clip that was Go Hard Gambia talking about, hey, listen, these people are tired of us. They're tired of the infighting in the group and the problems. And of course, there was a lot of infighting in the Gambia. And so what is my real take on it? Well, I feel like in a place like the Gambia, where you have limited resources and limited land and limited opportunities, and you have people owning the land, I think that's a situation for a disaster to happen because of how small the Gambia is. And I would tread lightly for people maybe moving there. Again, I haven't been there myself, but it just could be all bogus and all talk, but I've seen this conversation happening so much throughout the content and diaspora. We've talked about it here in Ghana, We've talked about it in Kenya. We've talked about it in Tanzania and obviously in Gambia. So there has to be some level of truth to it. Here is what I would uh, pretty much consider. If you're going to a place like the Gambia or any place, maybe you don't want to own land right away. Maybe you want to just visit and see what the culture is. Again, you might want to see how people are interacting because, you know, you, you probably don't want to be targeted. I'm not saying that you will, but you probably want to just sit back and see what's going on. What's the reason that you want to go to the Gambia? Some people are wanting to go there because of cheap land or the opportunity to build a house. But if the economic opportunities are not good, you might want to consider a larger country like Kenya, Nigeria, South Africa. Even Rwanda is much bigger than the Gambia. So you should look at what are all the things that you want to achieve in Africa and is the skill level there? All right, Kathy talked about, you know, hey, there's a low level of skill in the country. So it could be more costly if you go to the Gambia, if you're trying to really do a more sophisticated business. Obviously, with the whole land issues, with the diasporans and then black Americans or black British or Caribbeans, it's going to continue to be a problem. It's going to be something you can't get around. The more of us come over here and we're buying land, even though the government is saying, hey, you can freehold it, we can sell it to you. Those people are going to feel like, hey, listen, this is our grandfather's land. Who are you? And it's the same way we would feel in America or in black America when immigrants come in and they do things. We would feel somewhat touched, too. The reality is, is that there's going to have to be some level of mitigation on this complex situation in which I really don't have an answer for it right now. Um, I don't own any land in Uganda, um, and I'm not saying that I don't want to own land in Uganda, but that is trading a, you know, a thin line when people who are living there can't own it and are gonna have a resentment towards you. And let me also say this, here's the elephant in the room. You're also black, right? I think that if you're a white person that owns land or an Asian person that owns land, don't get me 
Don't get me quoted on this, but people may have an easier time accepting that. Oh, they're Chinese. They buy our land. Okay. Well, the Chinese are at a higher level than us or the whites are at a higher level than us. But when you're a black and then you're occupying the land, some people may look at that as a level of tribalism. And that is something that is dangerous. Um, I don't know if there's still constant attacks or if there are any attacks at all on black Americans. I haven't really heard that. I've heard that robberies have happened, which is like common anywhere. But again, if this continues to occur, I could see some hostility from those people towards, you know, African-Americans. You have to understand when we're calling out the lack of business practices, the lack of ethics that we're seeing in the private sector in the way that our Kathy put it out and displayed it, which is, hey, I've had those same experiences here in Uganda. But the way that it is being said, everybody is going to take offense to that. Nobody is going to see it the way that our Kathy is saying it. Well, hey, she's right for the most part. That's not how they're going to take it. They're going to take it as, oh, how dare you say that in our country? Who do you think you are? You need to leave or hear something to make you leave. So again, tread lightly. Also, if you're going to Gambia, there are people, from what I understand, who operate in diaspora land scams. That's been a really big issue in Gambia. Um, so please do your homework on that. I don't want you to get scammed. But yeah, maybe there's more to it than what this lady is saying. Guys, do you have any answers on this? Is this true? Let me know. I've reached out to some people in the Gambia. They didn't want to be recorded, but they did tell me that certain elements of this is true. Uh, maybe not all of it, but you guys let me know in the comments. Shout out to you. Thank you so much for watching King Ghana. We're out.